Hey everyone, and welcome to another biochemistry optical core imaging video. Today, I want to talk about what a confocal is, as well as how to set up and use the box A1R confocal. So we're going to, as I said, start with what's a confocal and basic confocal startup. And we'll start with essentially what a confocal is. So we'll go through a little bit of theory here that'll lead us into how to operate the box confocal. Let's start with a very basic light pathway in a microscope. We have our sample that's sitting on a stage. We have some objective lens, a tube lens, and finally we have some detector. For a 3D sample, it's likely that we'll want to look inside of this sample and image somewhere deeper into the sample than just the surface. The ideal scenario here is that we can excite this area that's within our sample and all the light that is released or emitted by that excited region will be detected. And that light that's detected will actually be in focus. So this is the case, like I said, if we manage to only excite the light that's present in that little red circle. All that light using our objective lens and our tube lens will be collected and ultimately directed to our detector where we can actually make an image out of it. So this would hold true for a very basic sample prep where you maybe are just dealing with a 2D slide. You don't have to focus as much on the fact that there's a 3D nature to this and you could get potentially imprecise excitation of your sample. That means, as I said, that there's a situation in which the light from your illumination source, that would be something like an arc lamp source, and in that case, you'll have light that is imprecisely exciting other areas of your sample. So not just that middle part that we want to see, but maybe above and below that area. And of course, this light we don't want to see because it's in other areas of the sample. And as a result, because we're not precisely trying to excite that area, we get what's called out of focus light. Or when we initially excite this sample with something really basic like an arc lamp source, that light will combine, the out of focus light will combine with the in focus light and you'll get a classically blurry image. So in many wide field or basic microscope setups, this is what you get. You'll get something that looks like it's in focus, but you'll have some haziness to it. And the haziness is coming from this out of focus light that's emitted in your sample. So the question then becomes, if I just want to see inside of my sample and, and not have any of this out of focus light, is that possible? Can I, can I get rid of out of focus light? And the answer, of course, is yes, we can use a pinhole. And the pinhole really is the critical component of a confocal microscope. What does a pinhole do for you? Like, how is that going to actually get rid of this out of focus light? So if we go back to the very basic setup here, um, and instead of having no pinhole in place, we actually put a physical pinhole or a slit that uh, is such a width that it will reject light that's out of focus. And it will admit only light that's in focus. So this very basic idea, the pinhole, is really the grounds for a lot of the optical microscopy we talk about today, especially, of course, as it pertains to confocal microscopy. But a lot of the technology that came out of developing the confocal microscope has been used in a variety of different microscope techniques. So that's, that's really the basic functionality of a confocal. And what I want to move into then is the box confocal. And what I'm just going to show here is a basic confocal startup that you will want to follow whenever you walk into the microscope room and nothing's turned on and you need to get going with the confocal and start your imaging experiment. So let's talk about basic confocal startup steps. Um, this is a picture of the confocal microscope in the Bach. And the first step is to power on the lasers by turning the key from off to on. So the first step is to power on those lasers, um, which are pictured here. And basically all you need to do for the Bach is just turn a key. So there's a uh, laser power button key right here, and you just want to turn that from off to on. And what will happen is these laser buttons will light up and start blinking. And they're blinking, of course, because they're they're warming up. And you can proceed to the next step without waiting for each of these lights to, to stop blinking. And the next step is to power on our detectors. 
uh, by pressing a power button on the controller. So these are conveniently enough labeled with numbers next to them, but just to zoom in a little bit, this button is located right here. And so you just need to turn that button on and the detectors will also take some time to warm up. But collectively, the lasers and the detectors shouldn't take any more than five to 10 minutes to completely warm up and be able to use. So the next step here is to power on the microscope and an LED light source by turning on the black power strip. Now you might be a little confused because I, I just mentioned that lasers are the light source for the confocal, but it turns out for um, our confocal setup, we can also use an LED light source for basic fluorescence viewing. So you don't have to use um, these detectors and the lasers in order to excite your sample and, and look at fluorescence. You can actually use a more simple LED light source that's attached to the confocal. If you just want to glance at your sample and see if your fl uh, fluorophore is um, actually active, then the LED light source can be very useful for that. And of course, more critically, the LED light source can be used in conjunction with the oculars to view your sample on the stage without having to go to the computer and, and use detectors or anything of that sort. So as I said, you just want to turn on the microscope and this light, uh, light source using a power supply strip here. And it's labeled and it's right back behind uh, everything else in the LED light source. So I'll turn that on, it turns on the rest of the critical components of the confocal. The fourth step is just to power on our workstation computer. That's pretty self-explanatory. You now want to actually move the desired objective into position. If an objective requires oil, you're gonna to have to add a drop of oil to the objective lens. Uh, for anything that's below 40x magnification, it's going to be an air objective on the confocal, so you will not need to add oil or water to that. Um, these include the 20x and below. So to just give you an idea of kind of what this looks like when you add a single drop of oil to the objective lens, I've made a quick little video of me doing that here. You can see that here, I'm, I'm gathering the oil and then I just add a single drop right there on the objective lens. And that's all you need. If you see oil that's starting to seep down off the sides of the objective, you do want to wipe that off before you proceed. And you'll wipe that off with lens tissue paper. This is just a picture of what the bottle and the confocal for immersion oil looks like. So we'll sign into NIS Elements on the workstation. NIS Elements is the software that's used to operate the microscope on the workstation. And you can see there's two icons here. One is the one you'll actually want to double click on. The other one is for analysis. You don't need to double click on that unless you're doing any kind of analysis. If you're a first time user, which if you're viewing this video is most likely, you'll want to create a new user profile after double clicking on this NIS element. So when you double click on this, Elements goes through a little startup and then it'll ask you to log in. And you'll just want to check the box for create new user, put your name in, or if you're going to make a lab account, just put in your lab uh, name as well. And I do not recommend making a password. It asks for a password and a confirm a password. You, you should leave both of these blank because it will be easier for me as the manager of the box to potentially get into your account and modify anything if you come across any difficulties. And after this, uh, you've made this new user account, it will load into a blank NIS element. So this is how, this is where you'll essentially be after you've completed the startup. These are all the startup steps for the basic BOC setup. Now the real question after that would be how do you actually shut down the confocal? So shutting down is super easy. It's literally the reverse of the startup procedure. So that just means you would shut down the computer after getting all the files you need off of it. Then you would turn off your main power supply switch. It's next to the computer. That will turn off the microscope and the LED light source. Then you'll want to also turn off the detectors and finally turn off the lasers. Part of this also, uh, the, sh the shutdown procedure, is to actually clean the objective. And basically the tools you need to properly clean the objective are some sparkle, which will be present above the computer in one of the shelves. Uh, you'll also need lens tissue paper. This is different than Kim wipes. So don't use a Kim wipe to clean the objective, use lens tissue paper. And that should also be right next to the sparkle on the shelf. So let me just play this video. In the background, I'm getting this um, lens tissue paper ready, and I'm just gonna wipe it across the objective. And I'm gonna press down a little bit 
to wipe away any of the oil that's present there. That won't get rid of all of it. Um, but I did get the vast majority of it, as you can see here. By the end of my the, the lens tissue, there's pretty much no oil coming off. Now what I need to do is add a little sparkle to my lens tissue paper and do the same thing. And this will more properly clean and wipe off any residual oil that's present. And then finally, what you want to do is go over just with the lens tissue again, some dry area, and wipe any residual sparkle that may be present. And that should be a fairly thorough cleaning of the objective. So with that, I just want to finish off this video and thank you for watching. Um, please be sure to check out the other videos on using the confocal because many of them, even if you're not going to use the confocal, many of those tutorials will also assist in using the other microscopes, especially as it pertains to using the element software, which can be a bit confusing for first time users.